All right, so welcome everyone. I'm so glad that you are able to attend this webinar. Um, this is just a general overview of immigration related matters as well as an introduction to campus and the resources that are available to you as an international student here at UCSB. So um, just a little bit about the folks that you're listening to today. Uh, my name is Eric Williams. I'm the Director of the Office of International Students and Scholars. And then helping me today is Felipe Racinos, who's an international student advisor here and uh, will be helping you on our chat and answering any questions that you might have in the Q&A um, box. But we'll also try and answer those verbally if we can. Um, both of us are alums of UC Santa Barbara and proud gauchos. So uh, we definitely have an understanding of your experience as a student here at UCSB and are happy to answer any questions you might have, whether it relates to immigration or not. Um, both of us would love to help you navigate campus and the system here. So um, like I said, this is recorded, so you will be able to look at our Cali training webpage, um, the same place that the link was posted for this webinar. Um, so if you want to reference it later, it will be there for you. Um, probably by Tuesday would be my guess. So just the, an overview of our agenda. Um, we'll give you a brief overview of the UC system and then UC Santa Barbara. Um, what you can expect from our office, uh, preparing for your departure and arrival to the United States, and then maintaining your immigration status, as well as some resources that may be helpful to you um, as you start your time here at UCSB. Um, so UC Santa Barbara is part of a larger UC system, and we have 10 campuses in California. Um, and so while we all do similar things, each campus is autonomous in how it processes um, requests or does policy. So you may have your friends at UCLA have a slightly different experience than you might have at UC Santa Barbara. So you'll wanna make sure that you're following any guidelines, whether it's from our office or UC Santa Barbara offices as it pertains to their policies and not say, well, at Berkeley, they do this, but that's Berkeley and we're, you're a student at UC Santa Barbara. So we just wanna make that very clear to you. Um, we have about 26,000 students on campus. Um, and in terms of our international student population, we have about 3,000 undergraduates and 1,000 graduate students with an additional 650 that are um, on postgraduate work authorization. So we combined uh, support about almost 5,000 international students here at UC Santa Barbara. So just keep that in mind when you're working with our office that we do have quite a few students that we're servicing. So um, just be mindful of that and we do our best to make sure that everyone gets the attention and, and help that they need. Um, and then within our campus, we do have five colleges and schools which are listed here. So every one of you will be um, assigned to a college or school based on what you're studying. And uh, you should know which one you are going to uh, be associated with. And those folks are going to help you with any academic advising that you may need. Um, so just familiarize yourself with how they service students, how you can access advisors and their information. Um, before you even get to campus. So that's one less thing that you'll need to worry about when uh, you arrive. Um, so here at UC Santa Barbara, it may be different from your home country universities and the way that it's set up. Um, each campus office has its own specialization. So here at OASS, we are specializing in immigration advising. And we can definitely connect you to resources, but there's a misconception that our office handles everything start to finish for an international student. When in fact, we have specialized offices on campus that deal with billing like BARC, the BARC office where you, if you have questions about your tuition fees and how to pay, you would go to BARC. The office of the registrar is the official record holder for 
campus. So anything that pertains to your student record, you would go to the office of the registrar. For student health, they obviously provide you with health care. But if you have questions about health insurance, or if you need to see an, a medical office off campus, they would be the best place to go to to help you navigate the healthcare system. And we understand that, you know, even as Americans, it can be really complicated to navigate the healthcare system in the United States. And so we definitely recommend going to the student health website and understanding, you know, the coverage that you have at, through the UC Santa Barbara Health Insurance and what services you can access through them. So please make sure that you familiarize yourself with those because when you're sick, injured, the last thing you want to do is trying to figure out what, ac what um, resources you can access through student health. So it's really important that's a, a one you might want to do a little bit of research before you arrive. Um, and then campus housing, there's a specific office on, camp on campus for housing questions for both on campus and off campus uh, housing. So make sure that you are utilizing that office as you need um, <clears throat> as it pertains to questions about housing. Uh, we get a lot of questions into our office about needing help with housing. And unfortunately, we don't have the staffing or resources in our office to help facilitate that. But we do have a designated office with experts on housing that can help you with any questions you might have. And then lastly, academic advising. So once again, I want to reiterate um, that our office and our advisors here at OISS are not trained to do academic advising. We have specialized advisors on campus through either your college or school, or even within your major department that will help you navigate your academic journey. So make sure that you are making appointments with your academic advisors maybe once a year um, or as needed to make sure that you're signing up for the right classes um, and you're on track to graduate in the time that you are looking to graduate in. So um, while we would love to help you with that at OSS, we do have colleagues on campus who are specialized to help you with the academic piece of your time here at UC Santa Barbara. And then here in the United States, um, we have what's called Student Affairs, and that is the division that our office is held in, and it's really meant to be a support system for students at UC Santa Barbara. So um, some examples of that would be the Campus Learning and Assistance Services, or CLAS. They are actually located across the hall from OISS, and they do private and small group tutoring um, for classes here at UC Santa Barbara. So if you're looking to get additional help with a specific class, they may have a corresponding small group tutoring session to help facilitate um, any questions you might have about the content of that class. They also help with writing um, and other skill sets that you might need to work on while you're a student here at UC Santa Barbara. And they are, those are included in your student fees that you pay. So there's no extra cost for that help. So please make sure that you're utilizing their services. Even if you're not sure whether you are actually needing help, go to their office and see what services they provide because it can really help you in um, getting the help that you need to succeed in your classes. And so often we see students who after the fact want to get help with their classes or change their grade and sometimes it's too late so get help early and often and if you're not sure come to our office we're always happy to point you in the right direction but we really are here to help get you prepared and be successful at uc santa barbara another big one for our students is career services we already had a question about finding jobs and and what kind of work you can do on campus Career services is essential if you want to be successful in finding a job on campus or even after you graduate. They have great services for international students specifically, and they will do resume reviews, help you write cover letters, look over um, your materials that you want to submit for an application to mm -hmm. a job, 
anything like that. So make sure that you're using them, especially you know, as an international student, you may not know what exactly a US employer it may be looking for or how they want a resume formatted. And that's where career services can really help you navigate finding a job here on campus or off. Um, and then you'll obviously want to consult with our office regarding any employment questions to ensure that you are following immigration rules as it pertains to your employment status. Uh, next is Counseling and Psychological Services, or CAMP. So they are actually housed in the same building as Career Services, and they're there to help you with um, any uh, you know, mental health issues you may be feeling, um, as an international student coming to study, you're going to be away from home, family, friends, you know, the comfort foods that you enjoy. And, you know, that can either be really freeing and you get to enjoy a new place, but it can also, you know, cause anxiety or insecurities. And that's where the CAP folks can be a resource to you to be um, someone you can talk to and um, help you navigate, you know, any feelings of loneliness or depression, anything like that. And this is used by students across the board, um, both domestic and international. Once again, those fees are something you're already paying for. So utilize that service if you are starting to feel like maybe you're isolated or um, sad or anything like that. That's what they're there for. And they also have uh, peers. So students who are trained to help their fellow students navigate any stress. Maybe you're having issues with a roommate or friend. Um, the mental health peers are there to help you um, navigate that and just be um, a friendly ear that you can talk to and um, be somewhat confidential in, in helping you with that. So definitely utilize those services um, because they're there to support you as you study. And they aren't necessarily um, attached to your academic piece of your, your time here at UCSB, but they really are important services that you can utilize um, here during your time at, UC, at UC Santa Barbara. And then obviously our office as well, and we'll go into more specifics about how we can help you. So an overview of our office, uh, we support students and scholars who are coming to the United States um, to study, do research, work as professors, or in staff positions. And so our wheelhouse truly is immigration. And uh, so we provide you with one-on-one -on -one immigration advising and recommendations for campus programs and resources. And then, so if we're not able to answer your question, which a lot of times we aren't because it's not in our expertise, we certainly will help uh, connect you to the right resource. So if you're ever in doubt, you can always come to us, but just be aware that we may say, this isn't something that our office handles, but let me connect you to the right office so that you know where to go. So when in doubt, come see us, but just know that we may not have an answer for every question that you have. We also collaborate with campus departments to provide global perspectives, um, understand how to best support international students and scholars on campus as it pertains to their immigration status and other concerns that they might have. And we are truly proud to bring you to campus and get to showcase all of the amazing things that you do. You bring global perspectives to our campus and for our domestic students who may not have the ability to travel internationally. You're bringing your culture, your perspectives to our campus so that they get to experience the world here at UCSB without having to get on a plane and travel. And maybe you will inspire them to want to go visit your own home country. And so it's really important that you're making those cross-cultural connections so that not only are our students going to learn from you, but you will learn from our students about you know, American culture and life here at UC Santa Barbara. So be bold, you know, get out there, meet folks. Um, everyone is going to be nervous about meeting new people. And this is your opportunity to kind of come out of your cell and just introduce yourself to someone you might sit next to in your lectures regularly. Um, and 
get to meet some new folks that you might not have met before. So as a, a former UCSB student who transferred here, um, you know, I definitely was afraid to meet new people, but I overcame that and I had a really great experience because I was willing to put myself out there and meet some new folks. So it's, it's a really great community here. Sometimes you just have to, you know, meet somebody halfway or a little bit more than halfway to, to introduce yourself. So uh, overview of the immigration piece of what our office does and how you can be successful as an international student. I want to emphasize that your immigration status is your immigration status. We are here to educate you and facilitate reporting requirements to the federal government, but you need to be an active participant in maintaining your, maintaining your immigration status. So I want to go over some of the important forms and um, departments that you might come in contact with so that you understand how you fit into this equation. So if you are on an F-1 visa, you are issued an I-20, which is issued by our office using a government system called CVIS. So using that I-20, that's what will allow you to apply for your F-1 visa. If you were issued a DS-2019, that means you're applying for a J-1 visa. So mostly these are our education abroad students who are coming for one to three quarters. But it may also be our um, graduate students who are funded by UCSB and, and bringing uh, fam family members with them. It's very important that you do not let your document expire if you continue to study at UC Santa Barbara. So however that looks like for you to set a reminder for yourself of when your I-20 or DS 2019 might expire soon, you will get an, an email from our office to alert you that it is going to expire, but a lot of times students may miss those emails or ignore them. And so you might wanna set your own reminder so that you don't have your document expire. Like I mentioned, the Student and Exchange Visitor Information System or CVIS, this is where all of your uh, information is held as we report it to the government about who you are, what you're studying, where you live in the United States, all of that important information is held in your immigration record, and that is reflected on your I-20 or DS-2019. So we interface with that system to report to the federal government about who our students are and what they're studying here at UC Santa Barbara. When you receive your visa in your passport from the US consulate or embassy in your home country, just keep in mind that this visa is only used to enter the United States. That is its only purpose. It doesn't allow you any extra benefits once you're here. It truly is just used at the port of entry when you're at the airport going through customs. Once you're here, your I-20 or DS 2019 is what keeps you legally in the United States. So a lot of students think that if their visa expires, they have to immediately leave the US. That is not true. The visa is only used as a key to enter the United States. Once you're in the US, you don't use that key again until you leave and then want to come back in your F1 or J1 status. So I'm gonna reiterate that, that the visa is only used to enter the US that is one of the most commonly asked questions by students. So please understand that your visa can expire while you're in the US and that's okay, as long as you have a valid I-20 or DS 2019. The I-94 is your electronic record that you will be given at the border when you enter the United States. So upon arriving and going through customs, in about, I would say, an hour to two hours, you should be able to log into the I-94 system to retrieve your I-94. And this is something that you'll want to make sure you check any time you enter the United States from any international travel, because then that is telling the government that you are coming in as an F1 or J1 student. And we want to make sure that that record is correctly reflected. 
So uh, cultural programming from our office. So this is more of the fun stuff that we get to do with you all, um, aside from the kind of more serious immigration piece. Um, we do a variety of programs through our office, whether it's social, cultural, or professional programs, where we're connecting you to different campus resources or helping you connect with each other um, through social activities. And we really truly want to highlight the value that you bring to campus because you do bring so much value to our school that is through your own perspectives, your sharing of your home culture um, and making those connections with our domestic students. So some of the ongoing programs we have are English conversation programs, which are um, led by volunteers on campus and in the community. And it's really just a um, very low key way for you to get uh, practicing your conversation skills and English skills. So if you are looking for a really um, relaxed setting to practice your English, this is a great way to get involved. Um, we also have international language exchanges that we host with our education abroad program. And that's a way for students to, um, we feature different languages um, each month and you can, if you are proficient in that language, you can come and help domestic students or other international students speak your um, native language. And then we also do career services, uh, immigration and employment workshops. And then we have International Education Week, which is an annual celebration hosted by the Department of State, where they want schools to highlight the international exchanges that they have on campus. Outside of this, we truly want you to be a part of our programming. So if you have ideas of um, celebrations in your home country that you want to help share with our campus community, we want those to be led by people from that, those countries. So we don't want to try and you know, put together our own celebrations of your, you know, maybe New Year celebration or any other cultural celebrations that you might have. We want you to connect with our office and say, this is a great um, celebration that we have in our, in my home country. I would love to share it with people on campus. And then we can help um, put together the event. Um, we have funding available. So if we need to buy food or anything like that, we are always happy to partner with you. And we really want it to be led from your perspective so that it's being done right and from, from your perspective as a student from that country. So don't be shy if there are ways that we can highlight your celebrations or culture, we're always happy to do that. So always reach out to our office if you have ideas and we're happy to partner with you on that. All right, so uh, departure and arrival. So before you get ready to leave and come to UC Santa Barbara, there's some important things to remember. First is what you will want to carry on with you in on the plane. Um, your I-901 receipt, so this is the fee that you paid to the Department of Homeland Security for your I-20 or DS-2019. If you have not done that yet, please do so. Um, we will not be able to register your immigration record upon arrival at UCSB if you have not paid that fee. So do that without delay if you have not done that. And you have instructions on how to do that in your email that you received with your immigration document. Uh, obviously, your I-20 or DS-2019, make sure that you do sign it. So on the first page, you should see um, your type's name and you'll want to sign above your name on that. And then your passport with your visa inside. The only exception is for our Canadian students. If you are a citizen of Canada, you do not need to get a physical visa. Everyone else will have a physical visa in their passport that you'll need to show with your I-20 when you go through the border. You'll interact with Customs and Border Protection, CBP, at the airport. So you'll just want to show your documents. They may ask, what are you coming for? You'll say, I'm studying at UC Santa Barbara. It should be a very quick process. 
Um, if you have any um, issues, they will generally call our office or provide you with extra documentation. This can be pretty rare, but it can happen. So just make sure you have all your documents with you. That's the biggest reason why students encounter issues at the border is because they aren't um, carrying one of those documents with them that I just highlighted. After that, you'll wanna check your electronic I-94 record. Um, and you'll want to save that as a screenshot in your phone because you will need to upload it to our office through UCSD Global. Um, and then you just want to have that as a record for your own file. Um, you may need to use that for any employment in the future. So anytime you come back into the U.S., just make sure that you check your electronic I-94 record. Um, and then getting to campus, I'm suspecting that 99.9% .9 of you will be flying into LAX or in, in Los Angeles. And so just we do get questions about whether we provide shuttles or buses um, to pick up students. And unfortunately, we do not have the resources or bandwidth to do that. We are welcoming over 1,200 new international students. So as you can imagine, um, Coordinating all of that would be really difficult in terms of flights and everyone coming from all over the world. So you are on your own to make it to UC Santa Barbara. We do have some recommendations. The number one way that a lot of people, both students and just folks in the community get from Santa Barbara to LAX and then from LAX to Santa Barbara is um, doing the Santa Barbara Airbus. And it's a relatively inexpensive way. Uh, and they have some regular pickups from LAX and come directly to Santa Barbara. Um, there's also, you know, Lyft, Uber, those are gonna be slightly more expensive. Or you can look into transferring from LAX to the Santa Barbara airport. And it's a quick, you know, 45 minute flight from LAX to the Santa Barbara airport. And it can vary in cost depending, but it, it can be an easier way to make that transition. So something you might want to look into. Uh, the Santa Barbara Airport is literally like a five minute drive from uh, campus, so it's really close. But the Santa Barbara Airbus does drop off at UC Santa Barbara, so that may be um, an option as well. Once you do arrive in at UCSB, you will want to complete an check-in on UCSB Global. So this is the same system that you use to request your I-20 or DS-2019. And it's the system that you'll use for any request from our office. So when in doubt, check UCSB Global and you'll see a variety of forms. But there is a check-in form for new students where you will submit your student new student local address where you're living in Santa Barbara. Uh, that is absolutely required because if we do not receive that we cannot register your immigration record and then you can fall out of status for not reporting that to our office so that is absolutely essential that you get that done as soon as you arrive in santa barbara you there will also be a quiz that you will take so that incorporates information that we're covering here and also the email that you received with various links to um, informational forms on our website about maintaining their immigration status. So it's not super long, but it is testing to make sure that you have read the information that we've provided. Given that we have almost 5,000 students at our office services, it can be really difficult for us to give you individualized information and so it's really up to you to make sure that you are doing your part in reading what we send you, whether it's to you know, a larger student body or if we're individually emailing you about something, please make sure that you're opening those emails and reading the instructions. That is the number one way that students will fall out of immigration status and have to leave the United States is simply because they ignored emails or they didn't read instructions. And it's so simple for you to just take five minutes to read what we've sent you. So I am begging you to please make it easy on yourself, make it easy on us, 
and follow the instructions that are sent out to you so that you are staying in immigration status. And there really isn't a lot of complication to your, your record if you are reading the instructions and following our advice. And then you also will have some documents to upload. So a scan of your visa, if you have one. And then also if you have um, your I-94 record, you will need to upload that as well. So make sure that you do complete those steps upon arrival at UC Santa Barbara, and then you won't have to worry about it in the future. Otherwise, we will be emailing you constantly for you to get that done. And then if you don't do it, you will be out of status and have to leave the United States, even though you just arrived. So make it easy on yourself, follow those simple instructions and you'll be good to go. So maintaining status, I've already alluded to this. Um, you, obviously maintaining your documents that you have, not letting your I-20 or DS 2019 expire. Um, if your passport is going to expire, you may have the option to renew it within the United States. Um, and that would be done through your home country's embassy or consulate in the US. So it, you don't necessarily may not have to go home to renew that, but you will want to keep an eye on your passport as well to make sure it doesn't expire. And then your I-94 record, once again, checking that every time you enter the US. You must update your local living address here in Santa Barbara, and it must be done within 10 days of moving. So if you move to a new apartment, you'll just want to update your UCSB global address within 10 days of moving into your new home. A full course of study is required. So for undergraduates, and that includes our EAP students, you need to be in 12 units. And then for graduate students, it's eight units. So when you have your pastime where you're going to enroll in classes for the next quarter, enroll in as many units as you can for that pastime so that by the time your, your new quarter starts, you are in 12 units. If you're not in that 12 or eight units and the quarter starts, we will then you will be receiving emails from our office. And then if you fail to enroll in the minimum amount of units, you will fall out of status and your immigration record will be terminated. So don't let that happen. Get help as early as often um, as you can so that you can ensure you're in the minimum units required for your education level. When you're traveling internationally, and this is just internationally, if you're traveling within the US, no need. But if you're traveling internationally, you do need to get a travel signature on your DS-2019 or I-20. And um, you just need that signature before you return to the United States. You do not need it to leave, but do make sure that you get that because the Customs and Border Protection Officer will look for that. And if you don't have it, it can cause issues at the border. If you change your major, we'll need to update your I-20 or DS-2019. So just let us know if you have changed your major, you can request an updated I-20 in UCSB Global. Employment, this is a big one and one we've already gotten questions about. Um, you absolutely can work on campus. Um, for F1 students, you only need to contact our office to apply for a social security number. So we can help provide you a letter that you'll take to the social security administration to apply for that, um, that social security number. For J-1 students, you must apply for authorization through our office before you start working. This is very important. Before you start working, if you are on a J-1 visa, you must receive authorization from our office first. So our, we have sent out emails with basic uh, information about employment. Make sure that you do read up on that um, because for the different visa categories, there are different rules as it pertains to employment. Any off-campus employment must have authorization through our office first. So do not take any jobs off-campus without first coming to talk to us and getting the proper authorization if available. 
Um, I, I know it can be really difficult to see your domestic peers working wherever they want, but you are an international student on a specific visa and the US government has specific rules pertaining to your employment. And so this may not have ramifications now, it, but it may have ramifications for you down the line and in the future. But our office does have a requirement that if we see that you are employed illegally, we do have to terminate your immigration status. And that is a requirement from the US government. So when in doubt about employment, come to our office, meet with an advisor. We're happy to discuss the rules of your employment based on your visa category, but that information is also provided to you in emails and on our website. So it's really important that you are informed about what rules pertain to your immigration status. Health insurance. So for our J-1 students, you are required to have health insurance while you're here. And whether you are getting that through campus or your own private insurance, there are requirements for that. And those are also listed on our website. So if you're not sure, you can reach out to us or you can reach out to Student Health about insurance requirements. For our F1 students, while it's not required, please have health insurance coverage because um, medical costs in the U.S. can be extremely expensive if you do not have health insurance coverage. So when in doubt, sign up for UCSB health insurance. It will cover everything that you need, and maybe a, there may be a small sliver of, of things that it does not cover, but for most of what you will need here in the U.S., you will, will be covered, and it will be extremely cheaper than if you were not covered under health insurance. Lastly, United States laws. I won't go through all of them, but you will want to make sure you are familiar with some of the basic laws here in the United States as it pertains to driving um, or you know anything else that uh, might be covered under your day-to-day -day student um, experience. And main, the campus as a whole will also have trainings for you that you'll go through. But the two that are really important for international students is <clears throat> You may know that marijuana is legal for um, California citizens who are over 21, but marijuana is not legal federally. And your visa is a federally um, issued visa. So for anyone on an F1 or J1 visa, you are not allowed to use marijuana. And we have seen students who have had their visas revoked because they had texts about marijuana use or anything like that. So I'm just letting you know that even though you may see it around campus, it's really best to not um, use it when you are out in Isla Vista or anything like that. There's even a dispensary in Isla Vista that sells marijuana products. Once again, it's only for US citizens who are over 21. So uh, just keep that in mind. And then other, the other piece of that is alcohol. Once again, you must be 21 and over to enjoy alcohol in the United States. So, um, and then there are very strict rules in terms of where you can consume alcohol. You can't just be in a park drinking alcohol or on the beach. Um, you may see people doing it, but um, it's important that for your visa and immigration status, you're protecting that. So please, if you are over 21, enjoy alcohol in your home or at a restaurant or bar where it is legally allowed to be consumed. Uh, if you have questions, always come to us. We're happy to answer those for you. And then the biggest one is to never ever get behind the wheel of a car if you have been drinking. Uh, not only is that extremely dangerous, but you can actually face a bar from the United States if you are pulled over and um, arrested for drinking and driving. And that is taken very seriously here in the United States. 
So if you are going to be drinking, either have someone who is not drinking drive you somewhere or take public transportation, get a taxi, get a lift or walk. Um, I will repeat that you do not get behind the wheel of a car and drive if you have been drinking at all. We take that very seriously and it can affect your ability to stay in the US. All right, so now that that serious piece is over, um, looking to more of the fun things that you can look forward to when you arrive at UC Santa Barbara. So we have a variety of campus organizations, clubs, and events. This campus is overwhelmingly supportive of students in providing them with events and social activities, um, whether it is um, academic, interest where you want to be part of the econ club or you really like playing chess and want to join the chess club or there's juggling there's video games there's a bad movie club where they get together and watch bad movies there's no shortage of interests and clubs that you can get involved in and i really hope that you will at least check some of them out it's a great way to meet people who have similar interests in making social connections on campus. Um, the shoreline, which uh, we have introduced to you, and that's where um, you will be registering for a lot of week of welcome events. But shoreline is where many departments and clubs may list events that are happening on campus for students to sign up. So familiarize yourself with shoreline. It's a great way to see what's happening on campus and attend events that might be of interest to you. Greek life is great here at UC Santa Barbara. There's various ways in which to get involved in fraternities and sororities. So if that's of interest to you, there is information through the student engagement um, website on campus. It's called CEAL, C-E-A-L. Um, and you can find more information about Greek life and getting involved. And it's a great way to meet people uh, both Felipe and I were in fraternities, and I still have friends that I'm, I get together with, and I know Felipe has really strong bonds with his fellow fraternity brothers. So if that's of interest to you, don't be shy, get involved um, and see what the process is, and you can always come uh, talk to us if you have questions. Felipe would be a great resource for that. Uh, student leadership. So there's so many leadership uh, opportunities on campus. And that is open to international students as well. So um, whether that's being involved in housing and doing, say, you want to be a resident advisor and RA um, after your first year here, then that's a great way to get involved in campus. Um, associated students is um, student government here on campus. And it's a great way to help shape policies on campus from a student-led perspective. So look into the, the ways that you can get involved um, through those pieces. But there are so many other ways to get involved in student leadership. And once again, you can go through SEAL to see what those opportunities are. And then um, some additional campus resources that you might find useful here at UC Santa Barbara. Uh, there's basic needs. So if you are feeling like you are short on money, you're having trouble finding uh, money for groceries or paying rent or anything like that, there are, um, is an office on campus that helps with those basic needs and helping you get those met. There's also a food bank on campus. So it's like a free grocery store where you can go and pick up um, food for um, meals and, and whatnot. And they have both um, non-perishable like canned goods and they also do have some produce available as well. So um, that is available to you and um, you can meet with any basic needs advisor to go over what services are available um, to you. Uh, there's the Resource Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity, RCSGD. They are right next door to our office and they serve the LGBTQI plus community. So if you feel like you are Part of that community, please reach out to that resource center. Um, they are a great group and they help connect students and have a lot of different meetings and social activities to connect with other students from the community. So I myself am part of 
the LGBTQ plus community. So if you have any questions or just need someone to talk to, you can come talk to me and uh, I'm happy to meet with you um, about being uh, queer on campus and in the community. Uh, campus Advocacy Resources and Education or CARE. So if you are um, in a relationship or you're dating or facing any issues with somebody who may have um, treated you improperly in a dating scenario or um, you felt uncomfortable in a relationship or faced any sort of issues as it pertains to intimate relationships, this is a great office to tap into and they are located on the second floor of the student resource building so one floor below us and they're there to support anyone male or female um who has you know faced any sort of dating or interpersonal relationship violence um they're there for you so it can be a heavy topic but just know that there are resources resources there for you if you are dating and you are facing issues uh, disabled Students Program, DSP. So even though they are in their name, it says disabled students. So that can be a variety of physical um, or non-physical disabilities. They're there to support those students. But they also, if say you break your arm and you're not able to take notes, they can help you with connecting you with somebody who is a note taker in your class. Or if you need to make arrangements to have alternative testing, times or extended testing times based on perhaps um, any sort of uh, learning disability that you might have or anything like that, they're there to help support. So um, please reach out to them if, if you need help from them. They are also located um, on the second floor of the Student Resource Building, and you can always connect with them if you aren't sure if you need help or not. And then there is Legal Resource Center on campus. So if you are having a dispute with a landlord in re relation to housing, or uh, maybe you did uh, get into trouble with the police, they would be a really great resource for you. Always come talk to us if you do find yourself in legal trouble. Um, we're not going to report anything to the government, but we do want to help you in relation to your immigration um, Status. So it's important that you come talk to us. We're not going to deport you. That's not what our office does. We do. We never ever deport people. Um, we're here to support you and and help you navigate through any issues you might face. But if we don't know about it, then we can't help you. So when in doubt, whether it's legal issues or any other issues you might be having on campus, come talk to us as soon as it's happening so that we can help you. And then we can also connect you to the right resources. Um, it's imperative that you get help early and often so that we can help you. If you wait, you may not be able to get help from us because it may be too late. So that concludes the prepared slides. I did see that there were a lot of questions coming in that Felipe has answered through typing. Um, so thank you, Felipe. But now I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have um, regarding uh, your time here at UC Santa Barbara. Um, regarding the October 13th deadline to provide an address, can it be a hotel or friend's address if um, we've not been able to secure housing? Yes, wherever you are landing, even if it's a hotel, report that address because otherwise, we may not be able to register your immigration record. So you will hopefully find, be living somewhere. If you're not living anywhere, please come talk to us and we can help you get connected to resources. But if you do have a, a temporary place to stay, report that to in your UCSD Global. And then when you move to a more permanent solution, you'll update your address again. Um, on C the CBP form, when I declare the value of an item, does it apply to daily wear? No. So you're really only declaring if you are bringing in large amounts of cash or anything like that. And CBP has made it pretty clear that it's just letting them know they're not going to be confiscating anything. And they recognize that students are maybe coming through with you know, physical cash if needed. So you're just declaring if anything is 
um, you know, large amounts of cash, but normal daily stuff, you're not going to declare that. And you can always ask DBP as well if you're not sure. Uh, let's see, I do not see any forms or required check-in forms such as new student um, address or anything like that. So if we have issued you an I-20 or DS 2019, you should see those forms. So if you're not sure, reach out to us and we can help you. But we do have to issue you an immigration document first in order for you to uh, be able to see those forms in UCSD Global. Um, where can I find the corresponding UCSD course to my AP courses? So that will be something your uh, academic advisors will help you with in your college. So that's College of Letters and Science, College of Creative Studies, or College of Engineering. Depending on which one you belong to, you'll want to reach out to them to see how they can update your, in, your academic record. Uh, internship opportunity offered for my major. I'm Canadian. Can I take it? And what are the steps to get approved? Yes. So if you do want to do an off-campus internship, um, then you would need to connect with our office. If it's going to be on campus, then you will just need to submit an on-campus um, employment form through UCSB Global. So um, once again, you'll want to just read through the employment information on our website uh, to ensure that you are following the right rules as it relates to your um, internship. Just keep in mind that for if this is your first quarter or year at in the United States studying, you do have to wait one year, one academic year before you can work off campus. So I know everyone wants to get started as soon as possible, but given that you may not be familiar with the quarter system, it can move extremely quickly. I myself, my first quarter, I will share, I did terribly my first quarter here at UCSD because I was not prepared for the quarter system and how quickly it goes. So give yourself some time to settle in. I know it can be really exciting to want to jump in and do everything all at once, but allow yourself time to settle into your new home, get used to your the quarter system, how the classes are paced, um, because it can be really overwhelming at times. And then you find yourself falling behind in your studies. And that's your the most important thing for you to maintain is uh, to do well in your classes. And that's the primary reason you're here at UCSD is to study. Uh, am I able to create bank accounts in the US? Yes. So in Isla Vista, which is the little community right next to campus where the majority of students live off campus, there is um, Chase Bank and you can open a bank account with them. There are a variety of other banks um, in Santa Barbara, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and then some local banks. So it really will be up to you which one you prefer, but you do not necessarily need a social security number to open a bank account. Um, and you know they they deal with international students regularly, so we'll be able to provide you um, information about opening a bank account. But if you can, we definitely recommend opening a U.S. bank account, especially if you plan on working. It's an easy way to get your paycheck. Um, automatically deposited into your U.S. bank account. Where can I find the form to get a social security number for work? So first, you will need to find a job on campus in order to apply for the social security number. Once you do get a job, then you will fill out the on-campus employment form um, on UCSD Global. But like I said, you know, unless you are a grad student who has to TA or do a research assistantship, if you're an undergraduate student, I really recommend just taking one quarter where you, all you're doing is studying and getting used to life at UCSD. Um, so then that way in winter quarter, you'll kind of get a sense of how things work and then can add some extra things onto your plate. But it's it can be a really common pitfall for students to take on too much and then they find themselves, you know, on academic probation or something because they didn't do well in the cl their classes because they had 
way too much going on. So that's my number one tip is just to give it a quarter and then explore some more options. Um, Mr. Eric Williams, that's me, <laughs> is the designated offer that, officer that signed my I-20 form. I'm having a challenge with the I-20 form. Um, yes, I did receive your email and have forwarded it on to an advisor to help you with. So we are aware of your situation and we'll get you situated um, sometime either by Monday or Tuesday. So we'll look out for that. Um, I think it does not show on my Bark account. I'm going to stay at Santa Ana's apartment and cannot find housing key. It's possible that they may not have assessed that fee yet, but if you're not sure, you can reach out to Bark office directly, um, or you can also reach out to housing to see when those fees will appear on your Bark. So if you've signed a contract, then they may just still be processing all of those contracts and getting the fees assessed on your Bark account. But if in doubt, you can reach out to Bark or Housing for that. Since we have to have at least 12 credits to maintain status when it comes to our course selection, should we choose at least four courses just in case we aren't able to get signed up in at least three? I would say, you know, as many as you can get into, sign up for those units. You can always drop and then drop the classes and get down to 12. But um, even if it's maybe a class you're not super thrilled about or related to your studies, sign up for those classes and then that way you have a buffer to work with. Um, one thing that is really popular or necessary, I should say here at UCSD, is called crashing classes where maybe the class was originally full when you wanted to sign up for it and you will quote unquote crash the class, meaning the first day you will go even if you're not enrolled. And sometimes there's a wait list that you can be put on um, as people drop that class, then they'll go off the wait list. But the professor wants to see that you are interested in actually attending that class. So if you need to crash a class, go to that class. The professor will usually give you instructions on how to get enrolled if there's space. Um, and just that way you are attending that class and you're prepared if you get into it that you have been attending class and ready to, to be a fully enrolled student for that. But I do recommend getting into as many units as possible so that you don't have to stress about scrambling to find a class and getting help from your academic advisor will be imperative if you need help. Uh, where can I find required documents for OIF check-in on UCSB Global? So when you log into UCSB Global, you should see a variety of forms if you've been issued a document from us. And one of them will say required check-in forms for new students or something to that effect. So you'll be able to see it um, on your UCSB Global. If not, reach out to us and we can help troubleshoot. I'll be arriving at LAX at 12.30 PM on September 21st. Take me three hours and 30 to get to the dorms by Uber. So if you're not sure, reach out to, to um, housing to get assistance with maybe a late check-in. Um, don't just assume that they are going to keep things open. Um, if you know that you might be running late even before you even land here, just follow up with housing. They may also have instructions for you based on late arrivals. Um, but they will do their best to accommodate as many folks as possible. They don't want you to be, you know, out of your dorm or anything like that. So reach out to them and get help. Um, if you're not sure, ask um, so that you can get the information that you need and not just assume and then you show up and no one's there to help you. Um, where can I find suggestions about travel insurance and personal property insurance? So um, with um, your, if you are doing health insurance through UCSB, uh, you are actually covered when you are traveling in the United States and even internationally. So your health insurance through UCSB covers you wherever you may be. Um, and if you have questions about how that works, you can reach out to the insurance office at the student health um, office but you are covered. And then in terms of personal property insurance, 
that would just be um, a Google search of looking at various insurances. We don't have anything that we would specifically recommend, but there are various um, insurance options out there. Uh, you may also want to reach out to the housing office to see if they have any recommendations, um, or maybe even the um, Legal Resource Center on campus might also as well. So uh, I'm glad to see that you are very, being very prepared about that. That's a question that I've never actually been asked. So kudos to you. <laughs> uh, can I park my car at campus? Yes, but you do have to pay for a parking permit. Um, so if you are living on campus, a car may not be necessary. Um, the bus system is really good here at, at in Santa Barbara and can get you to most of the places that you need to go. Um, if you're living off campus, then you may have the ability to park on the street, but um, just be aware that you do have to get a driver's license and you have to have car insurance. And then if you wanna park on campus, then you're buying a permit to, to park. So um, yeah, you can, but there's some steps involved. Uh, where can I find the quiz entry? So once again, that's going to be on UCSB Global. Um, log into UCSB Global, look at it. If you haven't looked at it since you received your I-20 or GS-2018, it may look differently now. So log in, familiarize yourself, um, with all of the different requests that are on there, and then you'll know where to go. The OSS have resources to help us prepare for questions we might be asked at the border control. So, you know, generally they're just going to be asking you what the purpose of coming to the U.S. is. You'll be providing them with your DS-2019 or I-20 and your corresponding visa. So they'll see that you're a student here. Um, you know, I would make it very clear that you're here to study. Um, don't say, I, I want to get a job, because then they're going to say, well, you're here to work, not study, and that will raise a bunch of red flags for them. So you'll just want to say, I'm here to study at UC Santa Barbara. I'm studying this, which corresponds to what is listed on your I-20. Um, so it's not an overly complicated process. And, you know, I know it can be a little nerve wracking, but just try and stay calm and and um, be respectful to the border official. Um, if you're being, you know, confrontational or you look agitated or anything like that, don't give them any reason to think that you're being suspicious about something. You're just coming to study and you've been accepted to UC Santa Barbara and um, that's really all that they need to know. So don't overthink it, just answer their questions honestly and it should be a pretty smooth process. Are we allowed to work in form of freelancing doing an online job? No, <laughs> um, that would require additional authorization through our office. So um, even if you have jobs that say you could work in your home country online or remotely, do not take those jobs. The US government, once your feet are planted on US soil, you need to abide by US immigration regulations and employment rules. So even taking a job remotely that is through your home country, that could be construed as illegal employment. So when in doubt, come ask us, but um, only take jobs that are on campus. Um, anything off campus that's not affiliated with UC Santa Barbara, come talk to us first. You will know your Cali uh, quiz score immediately. So um, you, uh, it will tell you whether you got questions right or wrong um, in real time. Uh, yeah, no YouTubing for you. So if, uh, if you have questions about that, there are some nuances to it, but I would just say, just protect your status. And a lot of times, a lot of this can come back to haunt you if you're looking to do uh, an H-1B visa to work or even apply for a green card, um, it can get really complicated. So keep it easy for yourself. I know there are so many more options and unfortunately the U.S. government has not kept up with the pace at which our technology is advancing and all the ways in which we can earn money. Um, so if you're ever not sure, come, come ask us. 
um, and we will give you our advice and we will hope that you follow it. But if you don't, then that's on you and any issues you might have in the future, um, that would be something that you would need to answer for. Uh, do I need to file taxes um, with my investment? Uh, you would need to speak to a tax accountant or a tax professional about that. Um, we do not advise on taxes in our office. We are not trained to advise on taxes and we do not want to give you the wrong information. So you might want to connect with a tax um, professional in the US or even in your home country if um, they may be knowledgeable about any tax treaties, uh, but it's a complicated answer that you'll need professional help with. From when international students become available to apply for a US green card. So that there are a variety of ways that you can um, attain citizenship or get a green card. Um, and I, it may be really early for you to be thinking about that, but we can connect you with um, some attorneys that our office works with um, if you're interested in learning more, but it can be very complicated. So uh, I, you know, it might be a little too soon to be thinking about that, but we can certainly connect you as needed. Uh, uh, the quiz is, yes, you, I mean, you will do the quiz through UCSB Global, so you can do that wherever you are, but if you come to campus and want to do it from your dorm, that's fine, but it's not a physical quiz that with a pen, pen and paper, it's all done online. Uh, which is the best way to commute if I live off campus, bike, bus, or other ways? It really depends on where you're living. Um, you know, if there are really great bike trails and bike paths, um, so a lot of people do bike to campus if it's feasible. But if you're living, say, downtown, which is about nine miles from campus, you may then want to look into the bus system. And just know that with your student ID, you do get free bus rides on Santa Barbara buses. So you don't have to pay extra. It's included with your student ID card that you will get through campus. Um, so you do have um, unlimited free rides on the bus system with your student ID. Are F1 visa students allowed to invest in stocks? Yes. Uh, just talk to us before you do that, um, but there, yes, uh, there are certain situations where you can invest through passive income, but um, come talk to us before you do that. Um, or you all are much more savvy than uh, previous students. So these are some really interesting questions as it pertains to employment. But my biggest takeaway for you is just come talk to us about your specific situation so we can help you. Uh, when do you get your student ID card? So you can do that upon arriving on campus. And it's going to be a little different this year for our freshmen. They are going to be rolling out an electronic card for you. Um, and you will receive additional information about that. Everyone else, um, whether you're a transfer or grad student, you will then need to get a physical card. So that is done in the university center um, where the bookstore is located. So um, you can, as soon as you arrive, you can go to the university center and get set up with a student ID. Um, and they'll have more instructions depending on your student status um, on how to do that. When does the dorm officially open? So uh, you will get instructions from housing on move-in dates for when you can move into your housing um, and uh, just be sure to look out for in instructions from housing specifically on what uh, the move-in weekend looks like. Are students able to take a gap year to, yes. If you need to take a gap year or even a gap quarter, anything like that, come talk to us. There's also information on our website, um, but you will want to discuss that with our office or at least reference the gap year information on our website so you know what all is entailed. But yes, you can. 
Are international students allowed to stay on campus during break? So housing has specific uh, information about when uh, the dorms are closed. There is um, temporary housing that you can move into during break, but it is limited. So that actually is part of your housing contract. So make sure that you read your contract through, but they also do have information on their website about when students can stay during break and when they are forced to depart. So I would look at that now so you can be prepared throughout the year. And if you are not able to stay in your dorm, make um, different arrangements to either go back home during that time or find other housing either on campus that may be available or in the community or travel somewhere in the U.S. and use it as a vacation to go to uh, visit another area. So, uh, but housing has more information about that. All right, I'm going to take one more question and then we'll wrap this up. Um, I applied for family housing for graduate student. When should I expect for a positive reply? So um, housing will release that um, and you will need to con contact housing about um, when they will give you notification about whether you received campus housing. Um, and uh, yes, that will be done through housing. So we don't manage that. Um, that would be managed by the housing office. All right, so we are 15 minutes after. Um, and so we're going to wrap this up. But if we did not get to your question, please email us. We are absolutely happy to answer any questions via email. You can book an appointment with us. We have um, virtual walk-in hours where you can just talk to an advisor without an appointment. You can call us. Um, anyway, we are here to support you and we are open during the summer. So please reach out to us if you have questions. I am so thankful that you joined us today. We are absolutely thrilled that you have selected UC Santa Barbara to come study, and we really want to make this a positive experience for you. So through your time here at UCSB, if you are having any issues, whether it's related to our office or another department on campus, we want to know so we can make this a better experience for you and support you. That's what we're here for. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't be here. So we are here to help you, but we also want you to be a partner for us in um, this journey and just make sure that you're looking out for instructions or emails from us. And we're here to help you the best we can. So we are looking forward to meeting you. Uh, come to our week, week of welcome events, come talk to us. I'm always available to talk to you in, in any way, whether it's related to your student status or you just want to know what fun things to do in the area i love meeting with students so don't be shy reach out to us and we will see you in september take care everyone bye-bye bye everyone have a great weekend